Good morning, cadets and families. Ken Doucette here, Director of the Youth Public Safety Academy. Very quiet in this building right now. We miss you. We can't wait to have you back till next year. But in the meantime, we want to welcome you to our second installment of the virtual Youth Public Safety Academy Summer Series. This week, we're focusing on fire safety. We have several special guests here to show us the ropes, and we, are, uh, we can't wait to hear all the exciting ideas that they want to share with us. Before we start, please remember that while the Middlesex Sheriff's Office places the highest priority on the protection of cadets' confidentiality, remote learning does not fully allow the Middlesex Sheriff's Office to control who is viewing a lesson. And therefore, parents and individuals should be aware that there is no expectation of privacy. We ask that you do not take any photos or videos during the presentation, as a full recording will be made available on the Middlesex Sheriff's Office social media pages. Finally, we encourage you, the cadets, to ask thoughtful questions during the webinar. You can do so by clicking the chat button at the bottom of your screen. Megan Lee, our awesome Director of Community Outreach, uh, who can see you on the screen, uh, and you can see her, I believe, will monitor those questions and ask them uh, for you throughout the webinar. With that, allow me to welcome our host, Sheriff Katujan. Thank you very much, Ken. Uh, and thank you, Megan, for helping us put this on. And good morning, cadets. Uh, you know, Ken and I, we miss uh, having all the cadets at our training academy um, and saying good morning and having them all say good morning back to us. Uh, but we are very excited to be hosting our second virtual YPSA, Youth Public Safety Academy. I hope that many of you joined us last week and we talked about COVID-19 and summer safety. And for those who didn't, you can still go to Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube pages and watch last week's recording. Really important information, I'd recommend you all do so. That recording in this session are packed full of information that you will find useful. And they're also, we've also designed this to be secure. My staff approves every registrant prior to, them, to being able to log on and no cadet's face or voice will be recorded. Your privacy and your family's privacy is our first and most utmost concern and it's protected by this technology that we're using. As our cadets know, YPSA is all about safety, and this week fo focuses on some of our bravest public safety professionals, firefighters and fire chiefs. We often call firefighters our nation's bravest. That's because their job requir re requires great courage, really, is all that I can say. We have a, a lot of brave firefighters in every town in Middlesex County, and I've asked two of them to join us today. First. I'd like to, everyone to say a virtual hello to Malden Fire Chief Bill Sullivan. Chief Sullivan has been a firefighter for 33 years, but most important, I think, uh, before that, he actually worked here at the Middlesex Sheriff's office, office as a corrections officer. And just a reminder that all our public safety professionals work together and learn from one another and become better for that. And that whether you wanna be a firefighter or a police officer or even a corrections officer, corrections is also a great career to get experience in as well. Chief Sullivan is one of 54 fire chiefs or commissioners across Middlesex County, and he has kindly offered to say good morning to everyone and tell us a little bit about being fire safe. So thank you very much, Chief Sullivan, and good morning. Good morning, Sheriff. Good morning, good morning to all. Good morning to the cadets. It's an honor to be here. As the Sheriff introduced me, introduced me my name is Bill Sullivan. I'm the Chief of the Mall and Fire Department, and I'd first like to thank the Sheriff for inviting me to greet all of you here this morning. It's always an honor for me to speak with young people like yourselves who are motivated by a desire to learn and develop skills that will benefit not just you, uh, but also your families, your friends, and your communities as a whole. Let me be among the first to congratulate all of you and thank each of you for participating in this year's Public Safety Academy. The Malden Fire Department remains a strong supporter of the Middlesex County Sheriff's commitment to the importance of instilling the concept of public safety in young people. So we certainly look forward to playing an active role in this academy each year. This year's virtual public safety academy is no different. Public safety is everyone's responsibility. Please don't ever underestimate the very important role that each of you play, not just by being constantly mindful of your own personal safety, but also of your family's safety, both at home and when you're away from home. In addition, my hope is that you that your experiences in this academy will encourage you to share these valuable public safety lessons with all of your friends and your neighbors as well. 
There have been many examples around Massachusetts of lives being saved by young people who knew what to do when a dangerous situation presented itself. A couple of examples. In January of 2009, a 70-year-old girl in Stoughton smelled smoke in her home. She alerted her parents, and everyone was able to get out safely. In December of 2014, a six-year-old girl who lives in Swampscott smelled smoke, actually saw flames near her ceiling fan. She had alerted her parents and everyone got out of their home in time. In fact, her dad was a firefighter. In January 2017, a five-year-old girl in Sharon alerted her 16-year-old brother that she smelled smoke and he was able to make sure that everyone got out of the house. Finally, in March of 2018, an 11-year-old Lowell boy smelled smoke in his home, yelled to alert his family, and was able to safely evacuate everyone from the building. Many stories just like these occur every year across the country. Obviously, the incredible part of each of these stories, the part that we're also very thankful for, is that everyone involved is safe. If you look just a little deeper, you'll see that in each of these stories, there was a young person aware of what was going on around them. They sensed the danger that was present, and most importantly, they each acted. They didn't hesitate. So given these examples, all of us need to be constantly aware of what is happening around us at all times. In addition, if what is going on around us can cause harm to us and those we care about, we need to be ready to take action and get ourselves and those we care about to a place of safety. If your smoke detectors or carbon monoxide detectors begin to sound an alarm or you see or smell smoke in a building that you're in, the best thing that you can do for yourself and your family as well as everyone else is alert everyone to the danger and get everyone out of the building immediately. And then call 911 once you're safely outside. This year's National Fire Protection Association fire prevention theme is serve up fire safety in the kitchen. Cooking is the number one cause of home fires and home fire injuries. Unattended cooking is a leading cause of fires in the kitchen. You'll receive more information about this year's fire safety message in this academy as well as the coming days and weeks. Please share this information with your family and friends. I hope that you all have a great experience with this web-based Youth Public Safety Academy. Thank you again for being a 2020 Middlesex County Sheriff's Office Youth Public Safety Cadet. I hope that the rest of your summer vacation is a safe and healthy one for you and your family. And best wishes to all of you from the Malden Fire Department. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Chief, for those kind words and quite honestly, you put it really well, that our cadets can learn from our Youth Public Safety Academy and the lessons that they will learn today and they can actually save lives. And we know of cases like that too. Not just alerting people, but knowing what rooms not to go in and how to move throughout the house beneath the fire and having their exit plans ready to go before that even starts so they know where that meeting place is for the rest of their family. No uh, so thank you, Chief, for taking the time for speaking to us today. We also have another firefighter here to share his story with you all. Uh, firefighter Craig Yearwood, uh, for those of you that have attended the camp in the past, is a longtime veteran of the Cambridge Fire Department. He's also been an active presence at the YPSA for several years. He is there every year, and I have gone to see him at the Cambridge Firehouse to see him with the cadets. He's a great leader, a great friend, and a great firefighter. Firefighter Yearwood, thank you very much for joining us, sir. Thank you, Sheriff. Uh, I'd like to wish the, the new cadets for this year um, a warm welcome and enjoy the program. Um, as the chief mentioned, safety is, a, is very important. I've been with the fire department for 28 years and I've been teaching it uh, in the classrooms and, and, and at the camp for probably about the same time. Uh, my kids attended it also and they're now 30. So <laughs> I've been doing it a long time. So chief, I mean, uh, Sheriff, please keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Craig. And, and again, thank you for your leadership uh, and uh, for all the work that you've done. You've been a great ambassador and a great supporter of us and uh, Cambridge uh, Fire Department and uh, fire professionals throughout the, the, the county and the Commonwealth. So I thank really the chief and firefighter Yearwood uh, for joining us and sharing their experiences. We are really lucky in Middlesex to have leaders like these in our communities, keeping us safe every day. Uh, now fire chiefs such as Bill Sullivan oversee uh, all, all fire prevention efforts in their city or town, but they have a lot of help from their own staffs to their fellow chiefs in Middlesex County. 
and from a state agency known as the Massachusetts Department of Fire Services. The Mass Department of Fire Services has several important responsibilities across the state. They inspect and enforce the fire safety co codes, ensuring our homes and places of business are safe to be in across the entire Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And they also run the Massachusetts Firefighting Academy, which is where firefighters receive training and continuing education to be the very best firefighters that we have really in the country, I think. And they all do this from their headquarters in Stowe, once again, right here in Middlesex County. Middlesex Sheriff's Office works with DFS on numerous initiatives throughout the year, but we know they love YPSA and working with you cadets most of all. The leader of DFS is a Massachusetts State Fire Marshal, Peter Ostrowski, and we asked him to share a few words about YPSA and staying fire safe. So check out this quick video from Fire Marshal Ostrowski. Hello, Youth Public Safety Academy cadets. I'm Peter Ostrowski, the State Fire Marshal, and I'm glad to join you and Sheriff Peter Katujan for this virtual YPSA. The Massachusetts Department of Fire Services and the Middlesex Sheriff's Office work closely together throughout the year to share fire prevention tips, and we are excited to participate in this virtual camp. The pandemic has interfered with firefighters' abilities to visit your classrooms, but virtual class programs like this summer camp allow us to remind you about home fire safety. It's important to make sure while at home, you are safe from fire, which includes making sure you are charging your electronics safely on a hard surface, helping to check to make sure your smoke alarms are working and helping out safely in the kitchen. I know the sheriff, Cindy and Ken are sharing information to keep your kitchens and cooking spaces safe. Many house fires are preventable so pay attention, you may just save a life. All of you can be fire safety leaders for your families and for your communities. As the State Fire Marshal, I want to thank you for taking part in this webinar and I hope you have a happy and safe summer. Well, thank you so much, Fire Marshal Ostrowski. Uh, we're lucky to have uh, another member of the Department of Fire Services with us that works with the Marshal a fire data and public education unit coordinator, Cindy Ouellette is on scene, actually on scene with Ken uh, Doucette live. Cindy is a terrific partner to the, our Youth Public Safety Academy here at the Middlesex Sheriff's Office. Those of you that came to camp in years past may remember explore, exploring our fire safety trailer that shows how to move around uh, if there is actually a fire going on in your house and to stay safe and keep your family safe. Cindy helps provide that and other equipment because she really believes in fire prevention education. Let me say that this information is really, really valuable. In fact, just this past week, I had a grease fire in my home. It was in our grill. Uh, it lit up and it very scary and it wouldn't go out. Uh, and it occurred, uh, it occurred on my grill and, you know, which Cindy will tell you is a very common, happens very commonly in the summer. We had a fire extinguisher ready for emergencies like this. Um, but when we went to get it, we, you know, it had expired. And I didn't think much of it. We hadn't replaced it because it looked fine to me. Um, and, you know, sadly, it did not work. Luckily, I listened to the fire prevention tips that she has given out on other ways to put out that fire. And we were able to do it very safely. But it's a reminder that it's very important to listen to information like this. I want everyone to know and Cindy to know that in the chief to know, I went out and got a couple of new fire extinguishers because they look fine. They just may not work. So it's important to check that. Cindy, thank you so much for the advice you've given me and my children over the years. And thank you for joining us and sharing these tips with us as I know you will. Thank you so very much, Sheriff. And um, congratulations on putting out the fire appropriately. <laughs> I can imagine it must've been pretty harrowing, harrowing yes, experience. And I'm glad you went out and got yourself a couple of new smoke alarm, I mean, uh, fire extinguishers, yikes. Well, that does happen oca occasionally and it's all about cooking. So good morning, everyone. Um, today, what we're going to do is talk about fire prevention and a lot about cooking safely, because I know that you are doing some cooking in the kitchen and you're also helping. So this is what we're going to do. I, I want to prepare you for um, being a responsible person in the kitchen, but also so that you can learn some safety tips that you can share with the rest of your family. So let's start, first of all, by talking about what fire is. What do we know about fire? Well, we know that fire is fast. 
Uh, fire can grow uh, quickly, very, very quickly. All fires start small, but they can grow exponentially. We know that fire is dark and it's uh, pitch black. We always see on TV that um, you can walk through fire and not have to worry about it, but it is nothing like that, as uh, firefighters will tell you. So in the event there is a fire in your home and there's a lot of smoke, you need to crawl low under smoke because that's where the good air is. And another uh, one final thing that we know about fire, it's hot. Heat is more threatening than flames, believe it or not. Room temperatures can rise to up to six, 600 degrees at eye level. That's why the best air is down below. You need to act quickly when you hear a smoke alarm sound. You only have one to three minutes to get out. Let's talk a little bit about fire prevention. Some fire prevention strategies uh, that we are going to learn about are mainly focused around in the kitchen because as the chief said, cooking is a leading cause of fires and fire injuries in the home. And it's the leading cause of fires in Massachusetts. Uh, unfortunately, smoking is a leading cause of fatal fires in the home. So we'll learn about kitchen safety, but just briefly, if someone in, first of all, never smoke. Secondly, if someone in your house does smoke, teach them how to put out their cigarettes all the way every time in a safe container. They can use a pail of sand or they can use water to put all the cigarettes out and dispose of smoking materials properly. Okay, a little bit more about fire. This is kind of interesting and something very important to remember. 75% of fatal fires occur in the home and most fatal fires occur at night when people are asleep. So this is why it's important to have working smoke alarms because most of us will not wake up from the smell of smoke because what happens, there are so many toxins in the smoke that it will put us into a deeper sleep. So it is important to have working smoke alarms so that we get the earliest possible warning so that we can get out fast. So for the ingredients for fire prevention, the first one is working smoke alarms. You wanna make sure that you have one on every level of your home and inside and outside your bedrooms. The next thing, as we're talking about smoke alarms, I didn't know, I don't know if you knew that smoke alarms have birth dates. They're on the back. So one thing to remember is that smoke alarms are effective for up to 10 years. So with an adult in your house, here's a challenge to you. Can you take a look at your smoke alarms to find out how old they are? If you look on the back, you see there is a date. So on the one on the picture, it's 2003 and November 17th. Well, how old is yours? If it's more than 10 years old or it doesn't have a date on it, it means it's time to replace your smoke alarms. Now we have a, uh, we always remember to change our clocks. Well, we have a saying up at DFS and throughout the state, when you change your clock, check your alarms. You wanna make sure that your batteries are working and they're fresh. So we encourage people to change batteries twice a year when you change your clocks. Now, if a smoke alarm is getting old, it may start to chirp. When, you, when they need new batteries or when the smoke alarm is saying it's time to replace me. So remember that chirp. Hey, this is a great time to take a poll. We're gonna give you some questions and you're gonna take an opportunity to answer them and see how well you do. So if we could get that poll question up, here it is. What does the sound of a low battery in the smoke alarm sound like? Three beeps? a dog growling, a chirp, or a car horn. Put in your answers, kids. See how well you do. So just plug in your answer, and we're going to close the poll in five, four, three, two, one. All right, let's see if everybody got the correct answer. Look at that, 76% answered correctly. So the correct answer is chirp. And three beeps might sound correct, but no. 
the smoke alarm, when you test it, will make three beeps. But when you hear that chirp, that intermittent beep, that's when it's telling you that a smoke alarm needs to be replaced or the batteries need to be replaced. Okay, great job. The next ingredient in fire prevention is having a practiced home escape plan. Whoops, there we go, sorry. Um, so here's another challenge for you. If you haven't created a home escape plan, you've got some homework. With your family, draw a diagram of your home. Mark two ways out of every room and mark where the family meeting place is. And you wanna make it away from the house and out front. So it could be a telephone pole, a mailbox, or a neighbor's porch. At my house, our meeting place is the rock as you first come into the driveway. Now the next challenge is to have a family fire drill like at school. Make sure everyone can get out within one, th one to three minutes. So time it and see how well you do. Um, so that's, so here's an, uh, uh, something important for you all to know. We would love it if you could take a picture of um, you doing a practice home escape plan or creating a home escape plan with your family or testing your smoke alarm and send it in to the camp address. And for those people who can do that, I will mail out a pot holder just like this with some other information for you. So there's your challenge, smoke alarm and home escape plan drills, all right? Let's continue talking about home escape plans though. So here's your job. Your job is to get out as quickly as possible and to stay outside. Remember you only have one to three minutes to get out of your house. So in your home escape plan, you will exit, go to your meeting place and call 911. If you know that someone's not at the meeting place and you believe that they're still in the house, let the fire department do their job and go in and get them. Never go back in yourself because the smoke is going to get thicker and thicker and that is what is most deadly to you. So the fire department and the firefighters are protected with face masks, oxygen, and very important external gear so that they can move around as safely as possible in a home. Remember, fire doubles in size every minute. So time is of the essence. All right, we've got time for another poll here. Can we put that poll up? Let's see how well you do this time. When should you go back inside a burning house? When the dog is still in there? When you need to get your homework? If you forgot your Game Boy or never? So see what you can do with these, answer your question, fill in, the, fill in the blanks that you think is the correct answer. And then we'll close the poll in five, four, three, two, one. Okay, poll is closed. Let's see how you responded. Look at that. You, most of you got the correct answer. You never go back into a house and you never go back to get your dog because the firefighters will do that for you. Okay, that's a really important thing to remember. Thank you. You can close the poll now. Oh, I can close it, right? There we go. Okay, as we've said, most house fires happen in the kitchen. Most happen because people leave the kitchen when they're cooking or they are distracted. And sometimes the clutter on the stove can cause a fire, as we are going to see in a few minutes. So there are important parts to kitchen safety. The first thing is help prevent a fire, to fire or burn. So you wanna make sure that pot handles face in on the stove so that children or people don't bump into them and knock them over. Counters near the stove are free from clutter and trash. People do not wear loose clothing when they cook. And there is a three foot circle of safety around the stove. If there are little kids in the house, help them identify 
three giant steps, steps away from the oven. Those three giant steps will, will be the three foot circle of safety so that they know that they cannot go any further, any closer to the stove than three feet. Or you could use a tape measure to measure out the three feet. And also tell who's ever cooking or if you're cooking, never leave the kitchen when cooking. Now what's gonna happen if the fire happens on the stove? There are two things that you can do. First of all, prevent by standing by your pan. But if a fire happens in a pan, you're going to put a lid on it, turn the stove off and implement your home escape plan. Don't move the plan, follow the home escape plan and go out and call 911. If a fire happens in the oven, keep the oven door shut, turn off the oven, implement your home escape plan and call 911 outside. So always remember, stand by your pan or put a lid on it. Be smart when cooking. You could use a timer to remind you that you are cooking, but there are other things to remind you if you get distracted, someone uh, calls, uh, someone's at the door. There are a few other things that you might be able to do that will help you remember that you are cooking. Okay, let's put up a poll. Here's your last poll. Can we see that poll, please? All right, what else can you do to remind you that you are cooking something? You could ride a bike, keep a wooden spoon in your hand, go watch TV, or play a video game. Okay, folks, I'm going to give you a moment to answer the questions. And we'll close the poll in five, four, three, two, one. Okay, poll is closed. Let's see how you did. Excellent job. Keep a wooden spoon in your hand. That reminds you, oh yes, I'm cooking. Okay, close the poll. Now, sometimes that burns happen. Children under five are most susceptible to scald burns. But if someone gets a burn, how would you treat it? If your clothes are on fire, you wanna get down, stop, drop, cover your, cover your face and roll. But if you burn your hands while you're cooking, run your hand under cool water for three to five minutes, but don't use ice because it, it can make it worse. Never use butter or grease on a burn and for serious burns call 911 for emergency medical help. These are some of the ingredients for kitchen fire safety. I hope you and your family will stay safe in the kitchen now that you know the ingredients you need to prevent fires. Also, Fire Prevention Week is coming up in October, beginning October 4th. And hopefully you'll see lots more information on that. And Sheriff, I am going to send this back to you. <laughs> Thank you, Cindy, so much. That was terrific. And, you know, I wish we had more time, uh, but I am sure that we can get more information out to our cadets because that was really valuable, actually. I pick up, every time you present, I pick up something. So thank you very much. And I, and I love seeing those poll responses coming in from our cadets. So Cindy, thank you very much for taking time out of your very busy day and sharing your expertise. Speaking of experts, we have several public safety professionals who have logged on today. So I just want to recognize a couple of them uh, just to let them know we said thank you for all their support. Officer Tara Connors from Billerica Police, Officer Kerry Kelly from Watertown Police. They have been here year after year with their towns. And I know there were some additional community leaders that couldn't join us today or just quietly watching and learning maybe even with their children. Uh, but a, number, a couple of them sent in videos to say thank you to the cadets for logging on. So we're gonna check out these short videos from Malden Mayor Gary Christensen and active police detective Tyler Russell. Hi, I'm Gary Christensen, Mayor of Malden. I can still remember to this day receiving the phone call notifying me that we had our first case of COVID-19. My immediate thoughts centered on our students and the impact that this would have on them and the many programs they were involved in. But now, Five months later, I should have known that the Middlesex Sheriff's Office Youth Public Safety Academy would carry on despite these uncertain times. 
And that is only made possible thanks to Sheriff Katujian and his dedicated staff. Although I will miss seeing everyone in person and hearing the cadets shout out their traditional morning greeting at the graduation ceremony, please know that I am thinking of you and counting on you to keep us safe and be our future leaders. Hello, Youth Public Safety Academy cadets. I'm Detective Tyler Russell. So glad to join you and Sheriff Peter Katusian for this virtual YPSA. The members of the Active Police Department and myself look forward to the YPSA every year. While we cannot join you in person this year, we are hard at work keeping you and your community safe and healthy. So be sure to pay attention to the presentations here at YPSA and remember that you too can be a public safety role model. Thank you from all of us here at Active Police Department. Have a safe and fun summer. Much to the mayor and the detective. Uh, they have been here year after year. We really appreciate their leadership and support. Those are great videos. And thank you to all our guests for joining us. To wrap up, we have a brief presentation from our very own Ken Doucette and Cindy Ouellette from uh, the Division of Department of Fire Services on how to keep ourselves safe from hazards in the kitchen. Now you'll notice that Ken and City have a Fire Prevention Week banner behind them. Just a reminder that Fire Prevention Week is October 4th through 10th this year. Good time to double check the fire alarms and smoke detectors. If you don't want to do them right now, good to do them now, but you can always do that as Cindy had said. Uh, if you have any questions for Ken or Cindy or me, you can type them in the chat, chat function below. We will answer them uh, before the end of today's session. Ken, well, actually, before I give, Ken, I just have to admire you. I've seen you oftentimes walking around the office in your robe, but I hadn't really noticed that you have actually been able to match the robe to your mask. Really well done for our cadets. Thank you for that. Ken and Cindy, it's all yours. Thank you again, Sheriff. Welcome back. We're back here. So what we have is a recipe for disaster. Uh, and we're going to talk about all of the things and we're going to put everything into action that we talked about in our slide presentation. The very first thing is Ken's lovely attire. Ken, no loose fitting clothes. No loose fitting clothes, but this is my bathrobe from Sunday morning. No, I got to wear my socks. No. Okay. Your socks can be made, but you need to wear tight fitting clothes. Very good. So, we talked about clutter, and as we can see, there's a lot of clutter on this stove. So let's talk about that first. Uh, what would cause a fire? I'm seeing the, uh, the paper towels and the dish towel. You're going to have to get those away from the stove. Okay. All right. All right. And also, here we have our wooden spoon in case we have to leave, but there are other things still. All the pot holders need to be moved, or are you going to wear one as you're cooking your sauce? So keep them on the counter. Keep them on the counter. Okay. Away from the stove. And get that dish towel, dish towel away from the oven because we don't want that to catch on fire okay. either. And, and we need to be really loud when we say these things too, right? That's yeah. right. Yes. Thank you. And also, you don't need to put your tea bags on the stove close to the flame. Oh, okay. I'll put those on the counter too. Very it's, good. Okay. Very good. Okay. Over here on the counter. You got a lot of reading material. You don't want to be distracted when you're cooking, so let's get rid of these. So that has my recipes and all that, and also has my world, my favorite Rob Gronkowski uh, newspaper, so I should get rid of those too. Yes, move those aside. Right. You're gonna put your recipes yep. in a safe place. Okay. All right. Um, the cocoa crisp and the cocoa puffs. My cereal? Away. Your cereal can be put on the table, uh, okay. on the kitchen table. All right. All right. You've got napkins very close to the toaster. Let's move those. Oh, fire hazard. Fire uh, hazard. Okay, yeah. Yeah. The candles can be moved. Oh, no, no candles? No candles. Okay. No. Three foot circle, is, uh, a one foot circle of safety for candles. The phone should be placed away from the stove because if you reach over, you can catch yourself on fire. Oh, uh, okay. Let's get, I'll put that away. All right. And the coffee maker needs a little bit more room also. Okay. No. Away from the toaster. Away from the toaster. Away from All the right, toaster. I'm going to have to find another counter for that. Okay, that's a good idea. So we're a little bit more, a little bit much better than before. Okay. Okay, now, can you tell me, Ken, if a fire starts in a pan, yes. what should you do? Uh, let's see, if the fire starts in the pan, uh, put a lid on it. Exactly. Could you demonstrate putting a lid on it, please? And I think you said uh, use it to, to cover the shield. shield. 
So just like that. Excellent. Always, always have a lid when you're cooking. Okay. And yeah. then leave the house and call 911, right? Call 911. Okay. Very good. And pot, the pot handle is hanging over the stove. Oh, right here. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. What do you want to do about that? Oh, I need to tuck that in. Absolutely. So nobody hits it as they walk by. Exactly. Okay. Preventing burns. So I should take the spoon out too. Move the spoon out. Okay. Exactly. And we have a fire in the, in the oven. So what do we want to do? Yeah, let's see. So I can see that? Yeah. Fire okay. in the oven. <laughs> So, what do want to do? so I am going to take and leave the oven shut and shut the oven off and then call, leave and call 911. Correct. Very good. Okay. All right. What about your toaster? My toaster. If the toaster is on fire, what should you do? I should put a lid on it if it's handy. Yes. And then maybe unplug it if and I could. Unplug it. Okay. And then the fire will go out. Okay. Very good. All right. So these are, notice how, how much cleaner and less, um, less problems will occur on this stove and in this counter because of what Ken did. He corrected all of the problems. We've learned to put a lid on, on fire, on, on a fire in the kitchen and keep things uh, clutter free and always um, or never wear loose fitting clothing. Awesome. Well, Cindy Ouellette, thank you so much and thank you to the Department of Fire Services. Chef Katujan, back to you. Oh, uh, Cindy, can we say Ken should never wear that bathrobe again, too? Can we have that as part of our new fire rules? Ken should never wear that bathrobe. Yes, we'll have to wear it. We've dedicated to Ken not wearing that bathrobe in the future. Anywhere, never mind near the stove. Thank you so much to Ken and Cindy. Those safety tips are incredibly helpful. I know my son Peter, my son Chris, and my daughter Isabel have all learned uh, from you guys. So thank you so much for making my house safer and all our houses safer as well. I know yeah. that Megan Lee has been monitoring our questions from cadets. Uh, what do you have us, uh, any questions that we can answer for our cadets, Megan? Thank you, Sheriff. We have a few questions for you and Cindy. So Cindy, your question comes from Emma Mack in Melrose, who is actually tuning in from Toluca, Illinois. She wants to know what is the difference between a carbon monoxide detector and a smoke alarm? Well, Aaron, I hope you're having a lovely vacation in, to, <coughs> excuse me, Toluca. <coughs> Sorry. There are two differences. First of all, a smoke alarm is going to detect the particles in smoke, and that will trigger the alarm to go off. Whereas a carbon monoxide alarm is going to uh, detect all of the carbon monoxide gas, which we cannot see, hear, or smell. So really, the carbon monoxide alarms are true lifesavers because without those, we would never know if we were exposed to carbon monoxide poisoning. Those symptoms are flu-like and we could attribute it to the flu. So those are the big differences. Great, thank you. We have another question for Cindy. Our next question comes from Lillian Salem. She asks, if we have a fire emergency and do not have a cell phone, how do we contact the fire department? That's an excellent question, Lily. So what you will do is go outside, exit out as quickly as possible, and go to a neighbor's house and alert them to your problem, and they will certainly help you dial 911 from there. And then go back to your meeting place so that the fire department knows that everybody is out. Great, and we have one last question for Cindy. What if a fire starts when you are camping? Well, you always, if you're camping and you're in a campfire, you always wanna have water near you, whether it's a bucket or a pail or something. In the event the fire gets out of control, you will have the water and a shovel so you can throw sand on the fire also. And just like everything else, um, have a prearranged way to get out. When you go to a new campsite or when you go to a hotel, make sure you kind of map out with your family where your exits are. Great, thank you so much, Cindy. Now, Cheryl, sure. we have a question for you. Your question is from Carl in Redding. He asks, are there firefighters working at the Middlesex Sheriff's Office? Well, that's a great question, Carl. I mean, you know, the Middlesex Sheriff's Office is a large facility with a few thousand people up there at any time. So we don't have any professional firefighters on staff, but we work really closely with the local Bill Rickup Fire Department. Uh, they're close partners of ours whenever we have fire prevention concerns, and they're a partner on YPSA as well. We also have a number of fire safety professionals 
on staff who help uh, keep everyone living and working in our buildings safe. So some of you have might met Captain Bill Buckley or Sergeant Shane Cassidy in our past camps. They've been operating our community command center. They're also responsible for our fire safety programming. They train our staff every year on the latest technologies and information for fire prevention. Uh, they also ensure all of our fire safety equipment is working and up to code. So that's how we manage it. Great, thank you, Sheriff. So those are all the questions we have for today and I turn it back to you, Sheriff. Well, thank you, Megan. Thank you very much for those great questions uh, and those thoughtful questions. It's great to hear our cadets thoughts and concerns. And I love having that poll out there. Uh, that was really interesting and engaging as well. So please remember that you can always email us at ypsa at sdm.state.ma.us with questions or suggestions and either Ken or I will get right back to you. There's just one more thing we do before we close out today, and that's to give our today's secret code word. Remember, today's secret code word. So get your pens and pencils and papers ready to go. I trust that uh, all of you got last week's code word. If you didn't or you didn't miss it, you can always go back to watch the recording on our social media pages to find out what it was. This week's code word is respect. Remember, if you collect all four code words, you'll receive a special prize from our office, the Middlesex Sheriff's Office. So make sure you write down that code word, respect. Next week, we'll have another code word and we'll have a very exciting topic to cover, canines. I know you cadets love the canines. So you'll get to meet all the working dogs we hear at the Middlesex Sheriff's Office. They do everything from therapy to narcotics detection to perimeter security. They're our partners and I know you'll wanna see them in action. Until then, from myself and everyone at the Middlesex Sheriff's Office, have a great week, stay cool and stay safe.